The Lord be with you. Welcome on this beautiful Thanksgiving Sunday. Whether you're worshiping at home or worshiping here in person, we get to offer our thanks and praise together. We begin by acknowledging the land we are worshiping on is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples. We also honor the heritage and gift of Métis people. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. In autumn, beautiful blue sky and golden land is clothed. Apple gathering children and nut gathering squirrels alike prepare for winter. We praise God for all we have received. Seasons turn, but God's love is changeless. That's all right. The big kids are sitting in the pews. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. What do you think about this weather turn? We had sunshine and warm, and all of a sudden you need a heavy sweater. Um, bad. It's bad? In some ways it's kind of nice, though, because it's nice. To, there's something cozy about being in a, a warm sweatshirt. Although it is nice to play outside in shorts and T-shirts and be outside. And you get yeah. to jump. Yes, well, the cold weather helps the leaves fall, so. With the big branches off the branch, and you put them in a big pile, and then you just jump in. If you had, if I had the baby sister, I would play with her, and then I would throw her in the leaves just to play. <laughs> just to play. That's a good call. That's, yes, but as I said, the cooler weather helps the leaves fall, though. So you can't just have nice, sunny fall weather. You have to have the cooler weather so the leaves start to turn color and fall. Because if it's warm and sunny, they like to stick around. So, yes, well, that's good. So today's Thanksgiving. Which is very nice. Very nice, indeed. And so it's a chance for us to pause and to give thanks. To recognize some of the ways that God has blessed us and that God has given gifts to us. Whether it's our family, our friends, the people around us. Um, so I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, because I'm going to put the big kids on the spot first. You're going to have a chance to think of what you're thankful for, but um, I want you to go ask a couple of the adults. I can just pick one. You can just pick one, but take the microphone so we can hear their answer. Okay. And it's on, um, just so you're aware. Um, but yes, ask a couple of the, the big kids sitting in the pews there what they're thankful for today. Like teenagers. You pick. Whatever big kids. Some, I call most of the gray-haired people big kids too because we're all kids at heart. And I am now one of the gray-haired people, so it's me too. So pick somebody. Pick two people, two, three people. Just go randomly. Just surprise them. For. I'm thankful for good health, family, and living in a country that is free. We're very blessed to live where we do, that's right. I'm grateful for my family. They're not perfect, but they're wonderful. <laughs> well, perfect would be boring anyway, right? That's right. And so what are you thankful for on Thanksgiving? Um, I'm thankful for that I'm in a happy place and that it's safe to be in this country and that I love this country. That's a great thing to be thankful for. Oh, we've got some friends coming up. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to have a seat, I've just asked, we've just been talking about some of the things that we're thankful for. 
So what, because today's Thanksgiving and it's a chance for us to pause and to say thank you. So what are, what is something you guys are thankful for? We're going to use the microphone so we can all hear. Having a good family. Having a good family, yep. For getting a nice house. Nice. And for moving to Canada. Yeah. And having a nice church family. Mm -hmm. And nice. a nice school. Nice school. Great. And good friends. It's a very grateful heart. Very grateful heart. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'm going to turn this off so I don't accidentally set it down and make a very big noise. Very big noise. Well, it would, because if it was on. Very noise. So it's a chance for us to say thank you. Uh, it's a chance for us to recognize some of the blessings that we have been given, and you guys have given some wonderful, wonderful things that you're... To give love and spread love everywhere. Give love and spread love. That's a great way to show a grateful heart. One of the ways that we do as a, a church family in the Diocese of Niagara is that every year we have an opportunity to honor somebody's ministry. What's ministry? <laughs> three second, three, three, 30 years or less. Ministry is how we, res, we use the gifts that God has given to us. So your ministry, part of your ministry is, has certainly been to bring a lot of joy into our congregation and, and, and learn. And as I said, some people, you'll see some people share a ministry because they help with leadership in the, in, the, in the service. So the people offer a ministry who help with the readings, um, the people who help with um, some of the food packages that we share, the meal program, the way that we say our prayers for each other. But ministry is how you use the gifts that God has given to you and share them. And so we have a chance as a congregational family and as a diocese to say thank you and to celebrate some of the ministries of the way that people have shared the gifts they have been given and have helped share God's love. And this year, we nominated um, Judy Riley. Judy Riley. Judy. She normally really sits over there. Of course, she's not here this Sunday. I announce it. But oh. yes, Judy. Judy. Yes. So in November, we're going to have a little road trip to the, to the cathedral if you want to go. The service, before you get really excited, it, we're going to the cathedral. <laughs> cathedral, it's the big church where the bishop ministers out of because the cathedral has the cathedra. Cathedra is the bishop's chair. It's a big fancy chair where the bishop sits. And the bishop is the only one allowed to sit in it. So the cathedral has the cathedra, is the fancy word, but it's the one where um, it's the diocese. So it's Christchurch Cathedral, and it's in Hamilton. Cathedral. Cathed. Cathedral. Christ Ch it's Christchurch. Call it Christchurch. <laughs> is that a person? No, it's, it's a church. We can hold about 125, 150 with a magic shoehorn here. You can fit 680, almost 700 people in that one. So it's a church that's like way bigger than ours. So 150,000, 150,000? No, you can, hit, you can fit about 700 people in there comfortably, and then you have to get a magic shoehorn out and chairs and people standing if you want more than that. But as I said, it's, and it's where other people who are being honored and celebrated for the ministry that they offer will also receive the Order of Niagara. So that date, I believe, is November 12th. Well, that'll be in the bulletin. We'll also try doing a little bit of carpooling because the downside about the cathedral being in downtown Hamilton is that parking is a challenge. Parking, parking your car is a challenge in downtown Hamilton. Why? There's just not very many parking spots. I know. I know. There's not very many parking lots. Most people don't live down there. Like, they come down there to work, and then they go home. So they just, sure there's... I don't live there. No, you won't live there, but you'll visit. But there's, the parking lot is really tiny. So like yeah. So it's a small parking lot. Very big church, very small parking lot. So we're going to share rides, so we'll drive down together. And the other thing is that if you don't want to go to the cathedral, because it's, I'm going to be honest, yes, St. Christ Church Cathedral, the other reality... Cathedral. 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 Woohoo! That's it. Perfect. The other thing, and shh, don't tell anybody else, um, the services are long. So it's a long time to sit still. 
But as I said, you can also watch it, you can also watch it from home because they will live stream the service. So if you, we can't, if people don't want to drive to Hamilton, because it's about an hour away, if you don't want to drive to Hamilton and sit through a uh, service at the cathedral, you can watch it from home. So that we'll kind of put together a little list of people who can drive and some people who want to, to go. And so, you know, people who are looking for rides and people who can drive. And then we'll kind of share some rides and we'll go down and help celebrate that. But I thought that was a good time to announce it because it's Thanksgiving Sunday. We're giving thanks. And she certainly is very generous with the way that she reflects God's love. And we're kind of honoring that. Mm -hmm. So next time you see her, tell her congratulations. No, but you have to sing like that. You have to sit. Yes, you have to stay still. Although they do have chairs in the cathedral, which are a lot more comfortable than the pews. They have like cushy chairs in the cathedral. The I know. Cathedral, ca cathedral. Cathedral. They have like cushion chairs, and yeah. they get to sit nicely and everything. They do. They do. Mm. Yeah. It sounds cool. It and does sound cool. If it's a girl, then she's a queen. No, she's still the bishop. She's still the bishop if she's there. Yeah. It's a girl or a boy name. It's bishop is bishop. Yeah. She is loving, but it's not a crown. It's a, it's a mitre, but she does wear a special hat. She does wear, it's not a crown. It's a pointy hat, a mitre. We'll learn about that another day. But for now, we're going to celebrate Judy. You've given some beautiful and wonderful things that we're thankful for, and that's kind of why we have Thanksgiving, is to pause and not, and to, to say thank you and to acknowledge and to recognize some of the wonderful blessings that we have been given. Excellent. So I think you guys get to be thankful for as well because I, there is a Sunday school lesson for you guys Yay! to go hang out. So if you'd like to go with Kathy, that would be great. Bye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you later. It's not tomorrow. We'll see you later. I don't know how long they think that lesson's going to be. That's all right. Would you please join with me as we offer our prayer for today? Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family today and in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our first reading, please. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses, and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestor did not know, to humble you 
and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. <clears throat> you still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. To Lord, joy, beauty, abundance, and peace are the tokens of your work in all creation. Work also in our lives that by these signs we may see the splendor of your love and praise you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our second reading, please. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also weep sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand and together we'll sing, we plow the fields and scatter.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, he called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Would you please be seated? There are some Bible stories that I think we know um, kind of deeper within ourselves than others. This, I have very clear lessons of the flannel graph board at the church and the crowd of people who went away and the one person who came back. That lovely way they told this story because it was a story with a simple and heartfelt message. It was not one that had to be translated or explained into today's culture. It was a story about 10 people who were healed. Nine went to show themselves to the priest and only one came back when they realized that they had been healed. It's a simple story, it's a story of gratitude. But it's also, I think, a story that we can find ourselves in, maybe in the crowd of people that we don't necessarily want to be in. This is a story about people who were ill. They had leprosy, which means not only were they physically unwell, they were ostracized from their communities. So they had to leave town, they had to leave the outskirts, they had to leave their family and friends, they had no job. They, it was a very dire situation. People were afraid of the disease, they don't understand it the way that they do now, there was no treatment. And once you showed signs of it, you were ostracized. So not only were these people physically unwell, they were apart from their community, their friends, their family. And so they really had nothing to lose when they called out to Jesus. They had nothing to lose. They had already had kind of the worst that you could imagine happen to them. And so they kind of called out, have pity on us, have mercy on us. And Jesus tells them to go and show themselves in the temple. And the faith and the conviction that they all had as they turned and walked away healed them. And nine of them kept going. And one returned, laid himself flat out on the ground, thanking Jesus, thanking God, and praising him for the gift that had been given. And we often like to talk about kind of how wonderful that one person was because we almost kind of assume that the other ones weren't grateful because they didn't come back. Were they grateful, but maybe took it for granted, or maybe they were so excited about what came next. They were so excited to be able to return to family and friends, they were, could go back into the temple to worship. It doesn't mean they weren't grateful. And sometimes I think, whether we mean to or not, we find ourselves in the nine. Wonderful, miraculous things have blessed our lives. There have been moments of giftedness and blessing and signs and, and moments when we are so sure and so kind of wrapped in the love of God that we get caught up in the moment. We get swept away in the joy. We get swept away in the excitement. And it doesn't mean we're not grateful 
but it means we didn't stop to say thank you. We didn't turn back to the source of our joy, our strength, our healing, our love, this incredible moment of gratitude. We didn't stop and acknowledge it. Acknowledge the source of where that came from. The one who created us, who loved us into being, who also gave us that gift. Sometimes it's just really hard to find the words because our hearts are so full. It doesn't mean that we're not grateful, but it means sometimes there are just moments when the, it is just too much. And we get swept away in the emotion, we get caught up in the moment, and we forget. We forget to come back and say thank you. We forget to pause in the midst of that because that's an incredible moment. As they were going, they were healed, which, as I said, would give them a chance to come back to their communities and back to their families and back, back to worship because they were no longer unclean. This would have been such a moment, and it doesn't mean they weren't grateful. But they didn't stop to say thank you. And that's the gift of Thanksgiving because it kind of forces us to stop and to pay attention a little, little, little more. To count the blessings we have been given. And it reminds us that it's not just enough to be able to acknowledge where the gift or our blessings have come from, but to also be able to pause and to give thanks. And as I said, sometimes it's hard. I think of our friends at, at uh, Trinity United this morning. Their church has been sold it's wonderful news. Um, it's two community organizations that are going to make a real difference, who help provide services for some of those who are underserved in our community, help uh, folks connect to services that are already present, help folks, um, and especially adults who uh, are dealing with mental health issues. There is a lot to be thankful for that that building, where it has been a place of where God is at work, will continue to be a place where there is good things and outreach and still a place of safety and security for so many, but there is also grief because their last Sunday together as a worshiping community will be October the 22nd. How do you give thanks to God in that moment for the many blessings that they have been to our community? They have been around for, for decades and decades and decades, way back to the 18-somethings. And their presence has been such a gift and such a blessing to this community. It's helped shape the world into who it is. And it's got to be hard to stand there today and to give thanks for all the ways that God has blessed them and touched them in the midst of that grief, in the midst of that kind of momentous moment that is coming up in just two weeks. Life for them is going to look very different, but there is also much to be thankful for, for the ministry and the presence and the faithfulness that they have reflected and shared outward in our community. I think of the year my great-grandmother died at Thanksgiving. I tell lots of stories about my great-grandmother. But she died, and we did her funeral on Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, which in some ways was a beautiful gift she had been the heartbeat of our family and what a lovely time of year to gather. And you couldn't have asked for a more perfect day. There we were on, the, on a little country hill in a beautiful cemetery, the trees, the color, the sunshine, laying her beside my great-grandfather in her final resting place, and yet our hearts were broken. Because this beautiful woman had been, as I said, the heartbeat of our family. It was hard to give thanks the next day at Thanksgiving didn't mean that we weren't grateful for the love that we had and the memories and the fact that she lived to be a beautiful 98 years old. But it was hard to pause and give thanks. And that's why we need moments like this because there are times when we have something to be truly grateful for but it's sometimes in a moment that's also hard to find those words. To be able to pause and to acknowledge the blessing and the gift that we have been given to celebrate the source of our strength, our hope, our love, our courage, the guidance that God gives, the presence that God assures us of, the love that is offered. Sometimes in the moment, it's sometimes hard, and I can understand why the nine just kept going, because this was life-altering. 
doesn't mean they weren't grateful, but they didn't stop to say thank you. And Harvest Thanksgiving gives us the little nudge, the little reminder to not only do we need to acknowledge and recognize, and we do, all the ways that God has blessed us, it reminds us to stop and to be one at the tenth, to come back and say thank you. Thank you for the ways that we have been blessed by God's love. Thank you for the strength that God has given us to face some of the challenging and difficult situations that we have been through, for the love and the comfort that we have been able to to feel through God's presence in our lives, the comfort and hope we receive in being people of faith to know that there is something beyond just our earthly journey, there is a heavenly home to know that whether we are celebrating some of those wonderful joy-filled moments or whether we are in the midst of pain or uncertainty, to give thanks that we are not alone facing any of that, that we are never left alone to face those challenges or that uncertainty or those, and that there is a community of people not only here in Thorold, not only here as part of St. John's, but that we are part of God's beloved family, And so that there is love, there is support, there is encouragement. There is the gift of of the witness of other faithful people around us and the blessing they are to us and the blessing that we can offer back to God. And so this isn't just a day to pull out those beautiful old hymns that we only get to sing once a year or to, I've got cornstalks in church again, I'm happy. (laughs) I also put them there so I knew I was going to have cornstalks in church. But it's also a a moment for us to offer truly grateful and thankful hearts up to God. For those moments when we were too overcome or too overwhelmed or too full of joy to be able to pause to say thank you. In the midst of the busyness or the pain and the uncertainty when it felt like too much to kind of lift your eyes and your hearts up to thank God for his presence, his continued blessing, his strength that we can draw on, the love that we can turn to, the comfort we can receive. We have a moment to stop and to be number 10. To pause in the midst of our blessings and in our gifts to be able to say thank you. To not only acknowledge the blessings we have been given, but to give thanks, give glory, give honor, give praise to the one who has blessed us so richly so that our hearts just aren't grateful, but we have offered that back to God in recognition, in celebration, in gratitude for all the ways that we have been blessed, we have been encouraged, we have been sustained, we have been strengthened. And also in the confidence in knowing that that will continue in the days and weeks and months ahead as life continues to unfold around us with the twists and the turns and the joys and the celebrations and the challenges, that we have a God who walks with us And we have much to be thankful for. Amen. With grateful hearts, let us stand and make our affirmation of faith. God of spirit and flesh, God of angels and mortals, God of heaven and earth, God of grape and grain, we spread our wings in flight toward you as we confess our faith to you. We stretch out our arms in need of you. We thank you for your love poured out as we sense your spirit shining in the sunlight, 
sailing on the summer wind, when we feel the brush of angel wings and singing in the souls of each one gathered here. Recreate us in your image as we encounter you today, that our lives may ignite a love to light the world, where despair drips dreary on drowning dreams. Help us to recall Jacob's dream and your promise to be with us always. Let your presence pressing through us infuse the world with joy. How awesome is this place. As we begin to offer our prayers for the people, I'd like to include uh, two, position, um, two petitions. Um, one is um, <clears throat> from the DeWolf family. Um, Bob's health has taken a turn. And so um, I, we are asking for your prayers for him and his family as they face kind of this next piece of the journey as his health continues to fail. Um, the family is gathering and um, as I said, I know they would appreciate uh, your prayers and your support at this time as things are looking quite, uh, quite serious. We also ask your prayers for the Hatley family. Uh, Pauline died about a week ago and I know that um, her life and her faithfulness and that there is comfort to be found in knowing that she is safe in God's keeping. She has been reunited with loved ones who have gone before her and she is at peace. In gratitude, and humility that is joined together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons, especially our Bishop Susan Bell. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we constrict between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation and world, who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community to those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer or undergoing medical treatment especially Justin, Al, <coughs> Linda, Shona, Ashley, and Bob, and all those living with chronic health conditions. Hear us, O oh God. <coughs> Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care and pray for the sick. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home care aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O God, your mercy. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we command our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving God, you are always true to us in love, and we are left wanting to say sorry. For our faithlessness to you and to one another, for forgetting of the poor and the broken, for our failure to cherish creation, for our false desires, for our hateful actions, for our wastefulness, for all we have left untended. Forgive us, we are sorry. Give us life, O God, to change, and enable us to change that we may live in you. Our persistently forgiving God hears our cries and forgives us instead of giving us up as lost. God seeks us out until we return to our loving God. Forgive yourself, forgive others, and be at peace. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. There is much for us to be thankful for on this Thanksgiving Sunday, for the many blessings that we have received, for the prayers that have been offered, for the love that has been shared, for the generosity as people have continued to bring in donations to help support the work of community care, for the contributions that have helped sustain the ministry here at St. John's, and for all the ways that our community meal program touches the hearts and lives of those in our community around us. We offer all of that up to God as we sing our offertory hymn together.
Please join with me as we offer our prayer over the gifts. Source of all life, the heavens and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the symbols of our labor and love, which we offer you this day, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. We lift up our voices and praise God. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promise to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. On the night that Jesus, he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be the communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith. Encourage us with hope. Inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine, you are the branches. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Together, let us offer our prayer. God of our hope, in this Eucharist, we find the source of all your blessings. Nourished in these holy mysteries, may we with our lives give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing. Meet your creator who awaits you there. Delight in the richness and diversity of the world Christ died to save. Live in the power of the spirit that renews all things. And the blessing of the creator God, the eternal father, the risen son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. There are still a few treasures and tasty treats left uh, to purchase from Granny's Cupboard. Now, this is a time of year when the selection isn't the same because it's been uh, well-loved and already gratefully received. But as I said, there are still some limited qualities. And just a reminder, they make a lovely hostess gift, lovely to tuck in a basket as we get closer to Christmas and all the wonderful, fun things we're going to be doing. So please speak to Gail about what's still available. There's still, a, it looks like a smattering of things. Some of the most popular things have gone, but there's still a little smattering of things left. So. Um, if you could talk to Gail, if you've got, uh, if you, as I said, they're great little hostess gifts, great little hostess gifts, and, or you can tasty, you can enjoy those tasty treats yourself, you don't have to give them away, they're also very tasty for your home as well, perfect. Community care, thank you to everybody who has brought in donations, we actually had somebody, you'll notice some of the cereals here, who went to that post sale, that yearly post sale, I think four hours in line, they waited I know, but they had a grand time because everyone's waiting together. And so this is just a portion of some of the cereals that came in for that. Some of it will be shared with the St. George's uh, breakfast program. Some of it will go to community care here. But as I said, they stood in line and, and that's kind of some of the, the gifts that they were able to purchase at that wonderful, wonderful sale. These are some of the priorities that community care has um, has highlighted this week, um, canned pasta, baked beans, spaghetti sauce, and juice. And you know community care is in trouble when they need pasta sauce. So when you're out grocery shopping this week, uh, I know a number of people, there's a full basket there, we'll be certainly getting in touch with community care to drop this bundle of stuff off. But as I said, when you're grocery shopping, toss stuff into the bins. Anything you need to, anything you use to feed your family, they need to help feed families. So here are some of the items they're looking for, but as I said, any of those kind of, you know, Thanksgiving specials with good prices on things, if you can pick up any extra and, and to, to donate to community care, I know the demands on their services are continuing to climb and there are continuing to be new people who need help. So anything that we can do to help support their work, um, they will gratefully receive. We're looking for some, in, and in, for some of our community meal programs, we're looking for plastic containers, like margarine containers, yogurt containers, some of them that, so we can send um, food home with people. Um, we can put kind of containers in soups. They can easily be reheated in microwaves. Um, so we're looking for those kinds of containers. Please wash them. We will sanitize them here before we send them out, but there is a basket at the end. And so, as I said, kind of that 500 mil-ish size, um, that's kind of the size we're looking for, single servings of casseroles or soups or that sort of thing. That's the size that we're looking for. Perfect, perfect. We are starting something new and exciting this week, and I promise I will not play. Um, can't even say I'm a fair weather player anymore. It's been too long since I played. People would not want to play with me anyway. We are starting a bi-weekly euchre game. So come on out, Thursday, it'll be a Thursday afternoons from one until three. There's a little $2 entry to help cover kind of prizes. There'll be some, some small things, snacky things available for purchase. But as I said, there'll be a chance, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring yourself. As I said, I will come and we'll enjoy the treats. You do not want me playing euchre. I am 
it's been too long and, and most Euchre players like to, people, to play with people who know all the rules. Um, but as I said, uh, that's a chance Sunday, it's Thursday afternoons, one to three, just some good old fashioned fun playing Euchre. So you're more than welcome to come and as I said, bring family or neighbors or friends with you. It's just a fun, fun day. This coming Saturday is the second Saturday of the month, so we will once again be meeting as a parish family at Phil's All Day Breakfast and Lunch Place. Um, it's in the little plaza on Glendale, just down from the keg. It is a very tasty way, a fun way to get together, a fun way to spend some time, and I find that if you eat one of their breakfasts, you don't eat lunch. Like, you're still full from lunch at lunchtime. But as I said, it's, you're more than welcome to come and drop by and to participate and to be a part of that. Fun script. So for people who are more organized than I am, as you're kind of doing your shopping and getting your groceries and getting your gas, um, we get a percentage. If you can purchase the cards from us, um, we get a little percentage back. So by doing what you're already doing, buying groceries, putting gas in your car, buying gifts, especially as we kind of inch towards this Christmas Eve season and holiday season, um, you purchase the gift cards from us, we get a small percentage of that. You get the full value of the gift card and you get to help support the church by just doing what you're already doing. So there's uh, an order forms at the back. There's a list of what uh, stores and what percentages we get back. And if you look in our um, parish e-blast that comes out, each month, there are a couple of couple of businesses that we get a little bigger percentage back. So you can kind of keep on that as well and, and plan accordingly. But that's, as I said, by doing what you're already doing, it, it's a way to help support the church as well. Perfect. So we have coffee hour afterwards, so I hope you'll be able to stay and visit. A um, little, little time together would be lovely. Whatever you're doing for um, Thanksgiving weekend, I hope that you eat too much, you laugh too hard, and that uh, you drive very safely. There's a lot of people on the road, so please be careful as you're driving and, and puttering around. But as I said, I hope that uh, there, are, there is more things to add to your gratitude pile uh, with how you choose to spend the next couple of days. So happy Thanksgiving and safe driving. Safe driving. So we're going to sing again a final hymn of praise. Uh, the trumpets sound, the angels sing. Would you please stand? The trumpets sound, the angels sing. The feast is ready to begin. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>